What's up everybody? I hope you're doing well out there in your world of live sound. I wanted to make another video about my live sound rig because I've gotten a lot of questions recently about my rack specifically and what I have in it, how to build one, what you need to build one, how it all works and all those types of things. So I wanted to answer those questions and give you some more information on live sound rigs and racks and what to put in them and why and how it all works. So I hope I can give you some more information on live sound racks and how to build one and what you need to put in yours to accomplish what you're trying to do. So let's dig into mine here. Okay. Uh, see if I can get this in a good spot here. Okay, I think we're good. <laughs> now that I'm down here on the floor, this is my rack. And um, all right, so if you're like me a couple of years ago, I wanted to get away from having just like a basic analog board that goes like directly into some speakers. I wanted to give myself more control, more processing. So the, the three things that I wanted to be able to do with my rack are I wanted uh, digital processing, which, you know, crossover, limiting, stuff like that. I wanted to have digital mixing capabilities, which is, you know, so much more expansive than just having a small analog board. And then the third thing I wanted to do was be able to split out my signals and give my band a personal monitor mix and then give front of house a stage split. So, and I actually do change this rack out a little bit here and there depending on what my schedule looks like so it's a little bit of extra work maybe there's a better way i can reorganize some of this stuff but um it's not too it doesn't take too long to switch some stuff out week to week or month to month so that's what i do the core components i have in this rack are the presonus rack mixer so this is a 32 channel rack mixer it has 32 inputs and then it also has like 16 outputs I think for monitor mixes and then you can either do mono mixes for wedges or in-ears or you can do stereo mixes for in-ears as well. So, so that's the mixer in this rack. Then you have the digital processor. This is the second thing I got when I got the, the mix rack and this is a DBX uh, drive rack PA2. So it takes two inputs a left and right out of your out of your mixer and then you can split it up into three pairs of outputs. And typically people will use that for like lows, mids and highs. I'm only using the two, I'm using lows and highs. So I'm splitting out the signal to my sub and splitting out the signal to my mid highs. The third crucial thing you need in a rack is a way to connect to it. And you can either buy a separate console and run a network cable out to front of house or wherever your mix position is, or you can have, and I should say, and or you can have a wireless router. So I have a Netgear Nighthawk in here. I think it's a 6,700 or a 1,600 or I don't know. It's a Netgear Nighthawk router. They're pretty good. There's a ton of routers out there. They will all do the job. You just want to get one that is well reviewed and reliable. I've also seen some front of house engineers add external antennas, which I'm actually going to do soon. They'll add like a ubiquity antenna on the outside of their rack or somewhere else where they can extend and strengthen their Wi-Fi signal to connect to their router. So you reduce the chances of dropouts. There are, there are three more simple things that I have in this rack currently. Uh, one is a Furman power conditioner. This gives me some good protection and power conditioning for all of this gear in this rack. The next thing that I chose to add, which is super handy, is this drawer. So I, I keep microphones and mic clips and DIs and stuff like that in this drawer. It's just a nice thing to have for the small stuff and for you know adapters, batteries, whatever you can think of. You, you may or may not need this but this is something I added and we use it all the time. So the last thing at the bottom of my rack here is a 16 channel split and we call this a copper split because this is basically a duplicate of all of my XLR signals. So all my mics go into this first and then it splits out a copy of the signal for us at the mixer so that like for my band we have this we use this mixer for our monitor mixer and then we have a 30 foot fan tail that comes out the back of the rack and we hand that to front of house and then they can plug all of the duplicate inputs into their stage box and mix our front of house when we're out playing shows all right so you're looking to build one of these racks now there's a couple things that i recommend that you kind of 
need to get for this for these racks and then there's a, a bunch of stuff that are kind of you know tailored to what you're trying to do so the the baseline thing that i think you need to put in this thing is obviously the rack mixer so there's a ton of them out there and there's new ones that keep popping up all the time i chose to get the presonus i used studio one and i looked into this and i liked what this box could do at the price point. Unfortunately, they went up in price since the time I got this one in 2020 or 2021. So, uh, but Behringer makes a great one, the X32 rack. Allen & Heath has a bunch. Mackie has some that are affordable. You could even get an Xair 18 that Behringer has. I mean, there's just a ton of, of great options out there for all generally similar price points now. And they all they all do basically the same thing and they're all going to make your show happen okay you don't need to buy the the crazy top of the line stuff if you're at my level or if you're at the level that most of us are doing weekend gigs doing bar gigs doing your own band monitor mix stuff like that unless you're doing festivals that are paying you ten thousand dollars plus per show or per week i mean i don't i really and even then like you can still get a behringer or a midas or a presonus or a mackie uh, uh, a soundcraft system and they will all get the job done if you're a good engineer okay the second thing that I think you definitely need is a good Wi-Fi router. Some of them have built-in Wi-Fi connections, but a good dedicated Wi-Fi router access point is going to be crucial to make sure that you have a good stable connection and that you don't have, you're not relying on the small built-in Wi-Fi that some of these boxes have. So you need a mixer and you need a good Wi-Fi router. And then of course you need a tablet or computer or whatever you like to operate the mixer with. Those are kind of like the three, like you, you need to have those, otherwise the system just doesn't work. Now, now into the nice to haves, okay? So a lot of these mixers can do processing in them to the level that you'll need them to do. I chose to get a drive rack PA because I was splitting into amplifiers i had a, an, some unpowered subs and some unpowered tops so i chose to get this guy to handle the crossover now i didn't again i didn't really need to do that i could have done that in the mixer i guess looking back at it but i, I like the unit it works well it allows me to do some other stuff that the mixer can't necessarily do but at, at this point i could probably just take take this unit out of my rack and I could still get good results and still do the job that I needed to do. Um, something that I haven't talked about yet in this rack is this headphone amplifier. And this is specifically for my band's use. We don't have wireless yet, but we will. We do use this wired headphone amplifier. It's an eight channel Behringer. So I can take my mix outputs from my mixer, plug them into this headphone amplifier and that's how we get our mixes to our in-ears wired on stage and we don't, we don't play a lot of huge stages yet the 30 foot headphone extensions or you can maybe even get some longer ones they work just fine so if you're in a band like me and you're trying to set one of these up to do a personal monitor mix system it's not too difficult you basically just need the mixer the headphone amplifier or some wireless units i have one up here i actually just got I'll talk more about that in a second too. Basically, you just need the mixer, you need a headphone amplifier to route, route your signals to your headphones because this will not amplify headphones on its own. That's very important to know. If you get one of these rack mixers, you can't just plug headphones into the aux out and have it amplify your headphones. You need a headphone, a headphone amplifier to make that work. And then the other thing that you really, really should get is one of these stage splits and that allows you to split your inputs to front of house because what the venue does not want to do is have to deal with your inputs being split on their end or having to send you monitor mixes now they will a lot of venues will will mix your monitors but then there's you kind of you kind of defeat the purpose of having your own in ear system and your own rack so you really need to get the stage split to be able to totally separate the two mixes between your mix and the front of house mix Okay, so let's just say you're just doing this for live sound. You have your speakers, your subs, and your monitors, and all that stuff. The setup is not really gonna change from this that much. You don't need the stage split or the copper split. You don't need the headphone amplifier, and you probably don't even need the processor. You could do everything just from the mix rack. You can have your subgroup outs, your, your aux outs handle your sub mix for your subwoofer. 
Uh, some people, that's called subs on aux. Some people like to do that. Some people like to run subs on a matrix where you just send the left right mix to a matrix output and you assign one of your, your aux outs as that matrix. And basically then you can just low pass all of your sub information so that your subs are only getting, you know, maybe like 100 hertz and below or whatever your crossover, whatever you want your crossover to be. By not having a processor though, you, you may run into the issue where you can't high pass your top boxes based on what top boxes you have. If you have speakers that have built in crossover, you can use those. If you don't, you may need to run your left and right off of another matrix as well so that you can use high passing so you're not sending the super low information to your top boxes. Like for me, I have the HDL6 by RCF and they don't have a crossover built in on them. So I'm that's, that's another reason why I'm using this processor so that I can use the crossover feature on this processor. So once you've got these core elements in, like the mixer, maybe the processor, the Wi-Fi router, the power conditioner is pretty important. It's really up to you on what you need to accomplish. You, if you're doing weddings, maybe adding some wireless mics in here would be a good bet for you if you're doing the band thing like I am. Um, adding the headphone amp or the or some wireless in-ears is handy as well. Another good thing you could add to this rack would maybe be some extra power distribution. Where's that thing? Ugh. I got this thing from Whirlwind. It's kind of a single unit, nice and small power distribution system. I can link them together. If I get another one of these, it gives me a bunch of outlets on the back. But this I kind of use for stage power when I'm doing my live sound setup. That way I can split out my stage power uh, separate from my PA power or separate from my mixer power. Just kind of gives me a little bit better power distribution abilities. You could also get some, some units from like Trip Light or Furman or there's a bunch of them out there that do a little bit of conditioning as well. This doesn't do any conditioning. It's strictly just power splitting, I guess you could say, with, a, with some breaker protection as well. For those of you that are looking at bigger power setups, there are much bigger units out there that will accommodate three phase power and all that sort of stuff. I'm not at that level yet, so I'm, I'm sticking with single phase power. I, I tap into like one or two circuits depending on how big of a system that I'm bringing to that gig and that works for me. So one more thing I wanna to talk to you about is the monitoring capabilities of these mixers and most of them have like a headphone output here that you can plug a pair of headphones or in-ears into and listen to the monitoring and do your soloing and you know, whatever you need to do to solo up in headphones to you know, get your work done. But unfortunately, if you don't have this thing in front of house with you, you can't really do that from front of house or from wherever you are in the audience mixing on your tablet. So the solution to that is going wireless. You just get one of these units, you plug this into your headphone output of the mixer, and then guess what? Now, I can be out there in the audience, I got my tablet, I can solo up a channel, I can solo up somebody's wedge mix or somebody's in-ear mix, depending on what band I'm doing, and I can monitor from anywhere in the room, anywhere in the audience, and it's, it's great. So that is my solution to monitoring the channels or the mixes when I'm not right next to the rack mixer. Now, while I don't think it's super beneficial for me to show you what's going on in the back of this thing because it's all basic routing, I got some power going to the Furman, I have all my signals coming from my aux channels going to my headphone amplifier, and it's all pretty boring stuff, and that's, that's stuff for other videos. But uh, one, one last thing I wanted to show you as far as organization is I actually have my left, right, and sub coming out of these three XLRs right here, and they're labeled, so that way, when I get to the gig and I am plugging in my system, I just have these tails right here and they just kind of get tucked in the back and that allows me to plug right in to my system. And then I also just have the one Edison power cable coming from the Furman powering the whole rack. So it's really just kind of three cables that I just got to hook up to my system and I'm good to go. Ah. All right, so that's my rack and what's in it and how it all works. And I hope I answered a bunch of your questions out there and I hope I maybe gave some inspiration and some ideas to you guys out there building your own racks. And as always, if you have any questions about this rack that I didn't cover in this video, please leave a comment down below. If you have any other suggestions on stuff that you wanna see about my live sound rig, about my studio, whatever, leave it down below. I hope you got something from this video and until next time, Peace out.